In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the transformations of functions. And the functions that we're going to look at, if you would focus on this table, okay, are the linear absolute value quadratic, square root, cube root, and exponential. The last four, so quadratic to exponential, we looked at last class, where on day three, the day of your pop quiz, we focused on the absolute value, okay, and how we shift and make that more narrow and wider, okay? So today we're going to take a look at all and how we write those transformations in terms of a function. So this note, uh, f of x is the parent function and g of x is the function as a result of the transformation, okay? That note is more for below this first table, okay? So we'll talk more about that. I'll remind you of that note when we get to that section. Before we get to that section, I would just like you um, to focus your attention on the rule for each parent function. So I'm gonna go um, column from left to right. I'll start with the linear, just to review. In our linear function, okay, we have f of x equals x. That's our parent function. Okay, so that is a line that intersects the origin at zero, zero, so I'm gonna add the arrows. Okay, all of these graphs are just screenshots from the graphing calculator. So the function does have arrows as it extends infinitely, so our domain, okay, if they, say we start from this point here, or any point on the x-axis, because the arrow means it's gonna continue going left, it's going to continue going right, so it's covering all of the x-axis. So my domain in words, okay, this stands for again, all real numbers. The range, okay, is gonna be all real numbers as well, because think about starting here on the y-axis, this arrow notes going up, as it goes over it goes up, and this arrow notes that as we go left, it's going down. So we cover the whole x-axis. And that's really what you want to ask yourself each time you identify the domain and range for a function. So let's just add the arrows here to absolute value. So it's centered right at the origin and it's right side up with a slope of one, up one over one. It covers the whole x-axis. Okay, starting here it goes all the way right and goes all the way left, so our domain is all real numbers. But the range starts here, there's no y values below zero. So the range is covering from zero higher on the y-axis. So that's why it's greater than or equal to zero. Okay, because the parabola as it goes up is getting farther and farther away from the y-axis, it is moving left and moving right, that's why we have a domain of all real numbers. And then from the range, it's starting here at zero and only positive for y, so that means greater than or equal to zero. Our square root function, let's add the arrow there. So our parent function starts here at the origin and goes right, okay? So that domain is only this side of the x-axis, so that's why it's greater than or equal to zero. And for the range, it's only on the y-axis, zero and higher. And then the cubic function. You can actually see the arrows there. They are really small, so we can make them a little bit bigger on the cubic function. As you can see, it's got the arrows that say it's going all the way left, it's going all the way right. So that's why it's all real numbers for the domain. And then on the range, as it goes right, you can see that distance from the x-axis getting um, it's increasing, it's getting farther and farther away as it moves right, so it is going up. So it will cover all the way up, and it'll go over all the way down, and with the arrows, it means it keeps going, covers the whole y-axis. Let's add the arrows to the exponential, as it's gonna continue covering left, and it's gonna continue covering all the way right, so domain is all real numbers, and then this graph is only above the x-axis, and it won't ever touch, it'll approach the x-axis, but it won't ever touch, so therefore it's just greater than zero and not greater than or equal to zero, 
we're just above zero and covering everything higher for the range on the y-axis. Okay, so now let's move down to these two um, graphs. This is our absolute value function and then the quadratic function. So our parent function here is f of x equals absolute value of x. And then our parent function here is already labeled, but let's highlight which one that is. It's this one here centered right at the origin. It says y equals x squared. So there's two different ways to know a function rule. And that's with using the f of x and then also using y equals. So in the first row, looking at a vertical translation, remember a translation is a slide. So if we're sliding vertically, that means we're going to slide up or down. That's a vertical shift or a slide. Remember, for absolute value, that's noted outside of the function. So we went here from zero up to here, which you can see that that's 20, this is 10. So this function is f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 10. It shifted up 10 units, where here, this is a negative 10, this would be f of x equals absolute value of x minus 10. So that vertical shift, going back to the note, this is the name of the function after the translation. Okay? So I should actually, after that shift, these f's should be a g. Okay? Because that's noting what happened to the parent function f of x is the original and g of x is after the transformation. So that new graph, okay, that's taking the function, whatever the function may be, here it was absolute value of x, plus or minus the k. The k in the first case, okay, if k is greater than zero, and for us, our k was 10, that means if it's k is greater than zero or positive, we're going to go up. If k is less than 0, and for us, that k was a negative 10, which is less than 0, that means the shift is going to be down. Okay? So this notation, when it has the function notation, noting you're adding or subtracting outside of your parentheses, that means a shift up or down. Okay? A horizontal shift is horizontal line, think of a horizontal this way, is either moving the graph left or right. Okay? To show that it moves left or right, if we take a look at the given functions, and I'm going to rewrite this y equals x squared as f of x equals x squared. So we can note that the resulting functions Remember, if it's plus 3, it's moving left. It's the opposite. So starting here, we went to here, which is negative 3. So there's a shift left. And so in function notation, this would be the resulting g of x equals x plus 3 squared. Okay, so when you add or subtract, in the parentheses, which is your function notation for the quadratic, that's a shift left or right. So positive's left, and then negative 2 means we're going to move 2 units right. So this would be g of x equals parentheses x minus 2 squared. So our function, okay, for us, this was the quadratic, so our notation would be g of x equals x plus or minus k squared. We're adding or subtracting within the function notation. Okay, so if k is less than zero, so for us, that was um, the negative two. We had the x minus two, so that's opposite, that shifted right. And over here, when it's positive, for us, our k was 3, and that shifted it left. 
Okay, it's an opposite movement. On the next page, the translation is a reflection. Okay, we can either flip it upside down and reflect over the x-axis or reflect it over the y-axis. So rather than doing each one of these separate or looking at each row separate, let's just take a look at um, our algebraic notation. So for reflecting over the x-axis, you have the negative out front, and that's because you're changing the sign of each output value. Okay? So let's circle output. With reflecting over the y-axis, the negative is within your function itself, okay? Because we're changing each input. So let's take a look at the graphs. So let's put arrows here. So in function notation, this would be f of x equals x squared, and then changing it upside down, the resulting function would be g of x equals negative x squared. Okay, it's putting it out front, not making the x itself negative. Okay, and we can take a look at that in class sometime because it actually would keep the graph the same. So moving it outside, okay, outside of your function, so we have to put in the parentheses, um, makes it flip or reflect over the x-axis. So here, this function I'll trace in one color. This function here is f of x equals e to the positive x. And when we change, so for the exponential, the function is actually looking at our exponent. So we actually change, so here's g of x. We're going to change that because that's the resulting function. Here's g of x equals e to the negative x. Okay, that's going to reflect it over the y-axis. We're going to look at some examples on the calculator. So let's just take down our notes um, for now and we'll play around. Because all of these you can see what happens in using your tool. So that makes it really easy. Now stretching and shrinking. Okay, first is wider and more narrow. So let's take a look at wider. The algebraic notation, so g of x are resulting, is we take some number and we multiply it times our function. So let's look at, here's our parent function. Here's the standard f of x equals x squared. When we multiply it by, let's look at this one, 8. 8 is greater than 1. So when k equals 8, it gets narrower. Okay, so we can see that function here. It's dotted. So let's actually change that to g of x. That's our resulting function. So we multiply the function x squared by a number greater than 1, it becomes narrower or pushes the u-shape closer to the y-axis. Okay? When we have a value that's greater than 0, but less than 1, or between 0 and 1, then here that's where our, boy, that's so small. I think this is, so let's change this, let's cross that right out. Let's change it to g of x, or we have our resulting function. I believe that says 1 8 x squared. And 1 8 is between, let's write that word, 0 and 1. We're going to see it get wider, okay? More or less, instead of pushing towards the y-axis, like pushing it closer, we're pushing it towards the x-axis. All right, so let's play around with some things on the calculators. On the next page, describe the movement from the parent function f of x to its transformation g of x. Okay? So let's take the tool. 
And let's first graph y equals x squared. And then put in the line underneath, parenthesis, negative x squared minus 5. Graph. So there's the first one. And then there's the second one. So if you hit trace, I must have done something wrong. All right, I must have done something wrong, so I gotta go back and take a look because it, it, when I put the negative in the parentheses, it shouldn't have reflected over the x-axis. So let's go back to y equals. Oh, yes, I see. The square is inside, so I gotta delete that and then move it, insert, outside. Okay, move over, and now graph. I think I just need to try that all over again. So clear, parenthesis, negative, x, close, squared. There we go, minus five, graph. So we can see what happened. The only shift was that it went down five um, that you can see because there was a reflection over the y-axis. And when you reflect over the y-axis, the left side will land on the right side. So when you see no change, that means um, with the v or the parabola, we have a reflection over the y-axis. So let's write that. So going from here to here, that was a reflection over y-axis, and then really this is x squared plus zero. So I'm going from zero to a negative five, that's a shift down five units. Okay, and let's look at the square root function below. Okay, so I open that up, go to y equals, clear both of these, type in the first one square root of x, And then the second one is one half square root of x. Why didn't you do square root of x? And then minus one underneath, and then move the arrow over to do plus three. Okay, now let's graph that. So there's the first one. And that one actually moved away from the y-axis, or I'm sorry, the x-axis. It's kind of hard to see, so if we zoom in right here, enter. Looks a little better. I still can't see part of that, okay? But knowing that it went from a 1 to a 1 half, we know it's going to get wider or pushes away from x-axis. Underneath, again, this is really square root of x plus zero. If I go from a zero to a negative one underneath, that means there's gonna be a shift right and left. In this case, it's opposite, so right one unit. And then we really have the plus zero outside, so to go from the zero to a positive three, we go right one unit and up three units. We go back. As you can see it go up. It did get wider as it went farther away from the x-axis, but what we're having a hard time seeing is that it's going right one. So that's why we don't see it connect. Oh, that's why. Because we don't see it touch the y-axis because that's where x is zero. It starts over at the one. Silly me. All right, back to the notes. The next one, I'm actually, instead of going to, and we have a typo. Um, f of x equals, uh, nope, there is no typo. This is using the function notation. So it's saying the f of x equals, 
This is our function absolute value of x. But we just want to look at this part of it. So f of x and then f of x plus 3. If we're adding or subtracting, doesn't matter what the function is, okay? Adding, subtracting inside the parentheses is the horizontal shift. So plus 3 means we're going to shift. Um, plus 3, we think right, but it's opposite. So left, 3 units. And adding or subtracting outside the notation is up and down. And this is going to be down 2 units. In notation, uh, that would be absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2. Okay, we can use the g of x. Last one. So here's our notation here. This is our resulting. So we go from f of x to this. We know outside that's going to be a shift up 4 units. That was easy. And then when we put the negative out front and not inside the parentheses, that's a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so in the absolute value notation, that would look like g of x equals negative absolute value of x plus 4. Okay, you put the negative out in front of the function. The last two or three to finish with pictures. Describe the transformation shown in the functions, then write the equation um, in function notation for the transformed function. So here's the original. And then this one moved down. If we look at the graph. One, two, three. So let's note the shift first. So we went down three. This notation here is the f of x equals x squared. It's written really small. So our transformed function g of x, since we just go down three, would be g of x equals Here's our function, x squared, so I just do minus 3. And you can double check these on your calculator. Next one, if I take a look at the vertex like I did here, we're right at 0 and we're moving right 4 units. So that's going to be right, that happens underneath the function symbol. So g of x equals, adding or subtracting outsides up and down, so it's going to be, if it's right, it's going to be opposite, we think plus, but it's going to be minus 4. And the last one, our original function is y equals 2x squared. So what's going on here, it's noting that it's going um, right 3 and up 1. So we're going to take g of x and we have the 2 out front with to the x squared, if I'm moving right or left, I need to add or subtract to that, to the x. So right 3 is going to be opposite of plus, which is minus. And then the up one is outside the notation plus one.